Living in the UK, we're surrounded by the seas and therefore surrounded by water waves coming in all the time. Water waves created by the winds. Now there's a tremendous amount of power available in these water waves. The powers depend on the height of the wave, in fact the height of the wave squared. So if the wave height doubles, we get four times the power. And it's also dependent on the period of the wave. That's the time it takes from one crest of the wave to travel through to the next crest. And if you do the calculations for the coast of the UK, there's an amazing amount of power coming in all the time. And it'd be great to be able to harness that power to make electricity, for example. So we're going to go back now. I'm going to show you three different ways of harnessing the power from water waves to make electricity. So this is a simple generator called the duck gen, for obvious reasons. At the end of the apparatus here, we've got a device that we can move to make water waves. Those waves pass across the tank and cause the duck to bob up and down. Now the duck is connected via a lever to some magnets, which is in a coil of wire. So when the duck bobs up and down, it moves the magnets, which generates electricity in the coil of wire. And that goes to a little meter. This measures 0 to 3 volts. So if I move this, you can see that we're making waves. The duck's going up and down, and that's causing the magnets to move. And you can see on the meter we're generating two, almost three volts there. So two or three volts, that will power some LEDs or a small radio, or even charge a battery. So this is just the sort of thing that might be in a harbour light or a buoy out at sea, where the continuous movement of the waves can charge a battery and power a light. So this is the sea snake gen. It's slightly different from the duck gen in the sense that it's got two containers that float on the water. And as a wave goes past, instead of just bobbing up and down, they actually move relative to each other like a sort of cantilever. And it's that motion that moves the magnets in the coils of wire and generates electricity. So again, at the end of the tank, we've got something to make waves. As the wave goes across, it causes the thing to bend like this. And that motion then generates the electricity and that's connected up to our meter. So if we make the waves, we can see that the thing is bending, and you can see that we're making electricity. So there's actually a much bigger version of this in Portugal, a few miles off the coast of Portugal, called the Pelamis Project. An enormous one of these is out at sea, made of many sections. And in that particular generator, oil goes from one container to the other. And as this thing moves in the sea, the oil goes from one to the other, and that generates the, uh, spins the generators and generates electricity and makes a large amount of electricity just from the waves, this beautiful wave action. So this is our sea snake gen. So this is the third type of way of making electricity from the waves. It's called the limpet gen. And what we've got is a chamber here that's open at the bottom. So it's sitting in the water. So there's some air trapped inside this chamber. Now as we make waves, the waves come along and they change the height of the water level in here in accordance with the waves. So what we get is a, an oscillating water column. So this is called the oscillating water col column technique. And as the water goes up and down because of the wave passing, it compresses the air that's in here and drives the generator. So as I make waves here, the waves go through the chamber, changing the height of the level of the water. That compresses the air and you can see it makes the generator move here. And you can see that we get electricity on the meter. So this oscillating water column technique is actually used in Scotland. There's an island in Scotland that powers many, many houses by using this technique. So this is our limpet gem.